and welcome back to Beginner's Guide to Adobe Camera Raw. We're going to be looking at the final three sliders in our uh, basic adjustments panel and that is going to be the clarity, vibrance and saturation uh, sliders and uh, have a little fun uh, with what they do. Now before we begin just want to apologize uh, if the sound quality over the last few screencasts hasn't been uh, excellent. It's been very hard to find a, a place willing to ship uh, condenser microphones up to here in the igloos of Canada. So I apologize that. Hopefully we'll be able to get our hands on uh, a really good condenser mic that will really increase uh, the sound quality. So moving on, as mentioned, we're going to be looking at clarity, vibrance, and saturation, our final three uh, in our Adobe Camera Raw uh, basic adjustment suite here. So we'll start off with number one, clarity. Uh, we'll bring out our picture here of some rather famous faces here, the presidents, some presidents of the United States. We're going to see exactly what this clarity slider does. Now the clarity slider is not to be confused with the contrast slider, although what clarity does is somewhat similar to contrast. Uh, contrast, uh, you can go crazy with contrast and really, as mentioned last time, posterize the picture or you know really wash it out. Uh, the clarity slider is a little bit more of a subtle adjustment slider. Uh, but let's again go extremes so we can see what it's exactly doing. So clarity, with lack of clarity, if we go down to minus 100, it's going to really blur the picture out. It's as if the presidents of the United States have gone in for some glamour shots and it's got a nice uh, fuzzy filter on it. but we don't really want to do that so let's go back to the default now when you increase clarity and this is what you're going to be doing with most of your photographs uh, most of the time your photographs can probably do with a little bit of a clarity boost to them kind of uh, like a sharpening uh, to it so as we increase clarity we're going to see the mid-tones are actually going to sharpen up quite a bit not quite as much as contrast but there's going to be an, a, a real texturizing to those mid-tones going on so what clarity basically does in a nutshell is it's a mid-tone contrast enhancer. So it takes these midtones here in the histogram uh, and it really works on them and it kind of leaves your your shadows and your highlights uh, more alone and it works on those middle parts there so you can see it adjusting those midtones as we slide that up and slide it down so that's where it's working. It's a really nice handy tool. Now again we're not going to be going to 100% but just to get a better idea let's zoom into Lincoln here and we're going to see exactly a little bit closer what's uh, going on. As we increase our clarity, notice in the rocks there's more texture. Some of the grains in the rocks and the lines in the marble starts to stand out. Uh, around the eyes we see it's getting darker, uh, adding more detail in the shadows so that uh, when we do our preview of before and after, we can see a lot more uh, definition and texture in the rocks. And it's it's quite nice. It's a great slider. Now, when you're doing uh, using this slider with uh, portraits or, or things like that, you want to be a little bit careful with it because it can add a halo effect to some of the midtones. or in portraits what you'll find is it seems to add uh, really pronounced some of the wrinkles uh, if you use too much of it, uh, adds you know crow feet around the eyes and things like that and nobody wants that in their portrait. So you'll want to use a bit but you won't, won't want to go crazy like this 100% in fact we don't want to either. So let's, let's zoom uh, back out to the fit and view mode and we'll We'll bring that down and we'll just add a little bit of clarity like we would do in an actual photograph here. It's going to allow this to punch up a bit. And in fact, even contrast can go hand in hand. So we maybe let's punch up the contrast a little bit as well. So then we see our before picture. And then we see our after. So we can see just a little more texture, some of those shadows, some of those lighter shadows in the midtones are starting to pop out a bit more, and in the trees as well, we see some some subtle changes uh, going on there as well, darkening it up and bringing real good texture into those chisel marks uh, in the rock here on Mount Rushmore. So that's the clarity uh, slider in a nutshell, a very nice uh, thing that you can apply to a lot of your pictures. So let's move on now to our vibrance and saturation sliders, and we're actually going to talk about these uh, together because they do kind of go together. In fact, when you look at the vibrate, vibrance and saturation sliders, they appear, at least by illustrated wise, that they are exactly the same. They both look the same, anyway, from the sliders here, but they do do different things. Although they, they, they work in similar areas, they are quite a bit different. Now, let's start with the saturation, because this is, again, uh, it's probably the heavier of the tools where you want to be careful with it. And uh, saturation, of course, uh, increases the color intensity. Um, but it's a slider that works on all of the colors, 
even colors that are already very saturated, it'll saturate them even more. Uh, you're going to start looking like it's a scene out of CSI Miami, where all the colors are going to be overly saturated sometimes. So you want to be careful with the saturation. So when we go down to minus 100, what that does, of course, it makes it completely monochrome. There's 100% uh, uh, monochrome or no saturation color at all. As you go up, it goes to 100% or plus 100 double saturation. So now your colors are overly saturated. Your reds are brilliantly red. Uh, we have uh, yellows, uh, overly yellowed, and all of these things. Doesn't look good at all. If we actually take the, uh, the color sampler tool here and click on some of these colors, we're going to see that we got 100% uh, red colors here. We got nothing in the green and nothing in the blue. Whereas if we reset that, we're going to see originally we had uh, some definition in those color channels that we we lose. So uh, saturation, you're going to be using it, but you're not going to be uh, going up overly saturated because everything just gets uh, way too overly colored. So let's back that off, double click that, send that back to the default position, and let's go into the vibrance. Now, vibrance brings out colors, but it doesn't bring out the overly saturated colors. What vibrancy does is it brings out your mid-tone colors without oversaturating your colors that are already uh, heavily saturated. So it adds more color variety uh, to those lower saturated colors and uh, it does a less effect uh, than the high effect that the saturation slider does. So let's uh, soup this one up a bit here and what we're going to see is here when now we get to 100%, if you look up here in our color picker, we have the red channel has some greens in it as well so it hasn't 100% uh, saturated that red channel uh, it does it is a little oversaturated of course right now because it is 100% but if you look at our preview before and after you notice that it doesn't uh, nearly do as much uh, damage as the oversaturation slider does so once again we just add a little bit of color vibrance and a little bit of saturation and uh, your pictures are going to stand a little bit more without oversaturating we can see that a little bit more in another picture here where we have a lot of uh, brilliant colors already, some blues and reds and yellows. And if we were to use strictly the saturation slider, these colors are going to uh, really, really get ugly. Uh, our, we got 100% oranges and uh, really bright blues and greens, so we don't want to use that uh, quite as heavily. Whereas the vibrancy is going to allow some of these bright colors to pop a little bit more, but actually you'll notice here in the blues, especially in the sign, it actually seems to darken it. Uh, and the sky adds uh, more dark color so that if we went to 100% vibrancy our colors actually some of them uh, seem to darken a bit and it's adding some vibrancy in different areas. We're really going to notice if we take our uh, our magnifying glass here and just kind of draw a circle around this fellow right here and zoom in here we're going to see uh, the differences between the two here. With saturation you'll notice that his vest turns a brilliant neon orange and so does the sign back here and everything else is kind of stays similar just kind of really jumps up but uh, if you notice with the vibrancy if we turn that up to 100 percent his jeans which were a neutral color before uh, become more colorful well the vest itself isn't affected quite nearly as much as you can see before and after so it's adding some of those colors into the midtones in the sign here we see there's some browns there before where there wasn't uh, hardly any before so it's adding a little bit more punch to those colors that were a little under uh, under subdued or under saturated so a uh, handy little slider uh, vibrancy again you're not going to be doing it to 100 percent but it gives you an idea that uh, what exactly doing uh, as they're working together, the saturation and the vibrancy. Now, just as another uh, side thing, you want to note uh, when you're working with uh, skin tones, you want to be very careful of the saturation slider because the saturation slider really makes a mess of skin tones. If you notice, you've turned up to 100%, we're going to get some orange faces here and uh, carrot faces are really ugly in portraits. The vibrancy sl uh, slider is not going to be touching the skin tones uh, like the saturation slider. So you notice here, we turn our vibrancy up. It, it's too high. For, of course, you wouldn't leave it at this. But you'll notice how the skin tones, they haven't uh, oranged or, or yellowed uh, like they do when you're doing the saturation slider, you know, it just gets really ugly. So you want to make sure that if you're doing portraiture pictures, vibrancy, yes, saturation, not so much. You want to be very careful with what you do with saturation.
Now, just as another side uh, thing, since we're talking about vibrancy and saturation and clarity, uh, a lot of times we're increasing our sliders, uh, always adding to the photo. Are, and you know, you wonder, is there any time when I actually want to go down in my sliders where that will enhance the photo? And yes, there is. There is times when you want to take out some clarity if you're. Uh, if your picture is kind of overly cluttered uh, with texture and uh, and grain, sometimes you want to take down the clarity. There's some fun stuff you can do with vibrancy and saturation as well, some special effects that you can add here. Uh, for example, on this picture here, if we want to give it more of an antique style, what we can do is we can bring down the saturation, so we're making a little bit more monochrome, and uh, then we can increase the color temperature, and that'll yellow the picture up and almost give it that sepia tone. So now we see before and after. Now we got kind of an antiquing thing going on. So there's cases like that where you can actually uh, decrease the slider, where you want less uh, color saturation or less clarity or less vibrance or less of the, any of the other sliders that we looked at. Uh, so it's not just a one-way tool. Uh, fool around with it. Have fun with it uh, and see what you can do with it. Uh, there's a lot more uh, interesting things that we're going to see as we go along here in our Adobe Camera Raw lessons that uh, we're going to be able to add to lots of neat effects uh, to our pictures. So that's the guide to clarity, vibrancy, and the saturation sliders.